What's up YouTube, it's your boy Will Motivation back again with another video and today we are talking about the 2023 Toyota Supra with the 3.0 liter inline six from BMW, obviously. Let's get the elephant out of the room. All right, so what are we talking about? We're gonna review this car from the outside to the inside and then take it for a drive. Now, if you're not, if you missed the video somehow, I just bought this car uh, in Delaware and um, I had to get one of these cars. Um, I test drove one of these cars from Turo. I did a review on one of these cars from the Toy Barn and these cars are super fun to drive. But let's go ahead and talk about how this car is overall, my, my review of the car. So if you're thinking about getting one of these or you're wondering why in the hell I got one of these when I have the Ferrari, the Lamborghini, Huracan, and all these different cars, but I ended up with a Supra. Let's talk about it. All right, so first thing I like to do in my review is talk about the exterior of the car. So, while some of you guys think this car is beautiful, <laughs> I'm gonna give this a, like a one to 10 scale rating on everything from the outside, inside, and then in the drive. And on the outside, if you look at the front of the car, Look at this angle right here. Look at this angle right there. Look at that angle. That angle right there. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that, that's hideous. It's hideous from that angle. And when I when I first saw this car, that is what prevented me from buying one. Like I, I was like, the, the nose of this car is too big. It looks like a shoe. But if you come around to this angle right here, Check out this angle right here. Come on, come on around a little bit more. <laughs> okay, camera man, there you go. Now that angle right there, that's that's a nice angle. That, it looks kind of exotic. Kind of has that Ferrari F12 type of look to it. It's still a shoe-shaped car, but from this angle, if you come around to the back, that looks pretty badass. Especially if you get like the, the wing on the back, which we have coming, by the way, carbon fiber wing. We're we'll throw it right here on the back of the car. We're we'll gonna make it a little bit more proportional. But from the back, the car looks good. So if you ask me to rate the car from the exterior, just walk around to the side. The back looks good. The rear quarter looks good. The wheels are okay. They're like 19 inch wheels. They're okay. Not bad. I think they could have been, they should have probably been 20s. Probably should have been 20s, but hey, at least we got the Michelins on there. Uh, some of the, the, the curves and stuff, they look good. But you know the big, the other big elephant in the room is all of these, all of these fake, what's up, whoever that is. All of these fake vents. Look at this fake vent, plastic. Fake plastic vent, that's cheesy. You got another one right here, look. That's super cheesy. Why would you do that? Look at look over here in the front. Fake. Fake. Cheese. Cheesy. Look at this. That's fake right there. Look right here. That's the worst one right there. A big piece of plastic in the front of the car. That's whack. So, sorry Supra. I think they really could have done a lot better with the design. And the worst thing about this car is the front end looks like a big nose or a big shoe. Um, the fake vents. I'm going to have to give this like a 6 out of 10 for exterior styling. A 6 out of 10. I mean, that's being kind of generous for real. Like, if this car looked better, like, man, if this car looked better, like on the, on, on the level of a Corvette, on the level of even a Camaro, on the level of... Even Nissan Z is kind of ugly, but it looks, it does look better than this. Even, a, um, look at that. Condor. Look, look right there. Look. I'm a little slow, so that's all right. <laughs> but even if they could have got it to look like, the main competitor, in my opinion, is the, the GTR, the Nissan GTR. If they could have made this look something like that, oh my God. 
You can even add like another 20 grand to the price. Make it look like a GTR, add $20,000 to the price, hotcakes. Here's the saving grace of this car, is the beautiful clean engine. Um, obviously this car is modified with charge pipes, the air intake from Takeda. Um, I still have stock down pipe, but I got some I got some sauce in here, you know what I mean? But this is that inline six from BMW, 3.0 liter, almost 400 horsepower. That makes this car a blast to drive. So big shout out to BMW. They did their thing with this engine, the S58. And everybody will tell you like, it's a really good engine. It responds well to mods. It's a saving grace. And we got somebody showing out in a... <laughs> Let's look at the inside of the car. I do like these carbon fiber uh, mirrors. Wheel motivation. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so we got we we'll maybe get a subscriber out of this. Interior of the car, it's a lot better. I'll, I'll give the inside of the car a. I'll give it a. It's a little kind of boring, and they shouldn't have stole so much from BMW on the inside of the car. I get an 8.5 out of 10. I love the seats; they're very comfortable. The bolstering, the material they use, is really good. All right, check out the inside of the car. Here's your steering wheel. You got your BMW style controls here, over here as well, which is good, it's cool. Now, right there, let me start this car up so you see what it looks like. You gotta push, you gotta push to start, which is cool. And oh, that co-star is nice, right? Check it out. Ah, that's like, all right, they could have did a lot better right there. Look at the little car that shows up in that space. That's the only thing that they use that space for. You can have so many other cool things in that space, but they choose to just show that, and that's it. Screen is plenty big. Oops, let me back up here. Screen is uh, plenty big. All of this stuff they stole from the BMW Z4 is kind of whack. They could have did a lot better. I mean, a little bit of touch of carbon fiber is nice. They should have probably did some more over here in the dash and on the doors, but they didn't. It's kind of like they got lazy on the interior it's it's all right though it's nice it's comfortable these seats are really comfortable um now here's something to be aware of right here in the back there's no firewall so you are exposed to the trunk and these little speakers right here let me open up the trunk you're exposed to the trunk so whatever creaks and rattles are going on or whatever in the trunk you're going to hear it so here's what it looks like Trunk space is minimal. You got that speaker box taking up a lot of the space. Uh, and the speakers are not that great. I'll get a stereo system like a... Uh, it's not so good. But here's... here's that's kind of cool, a little super thing. This does not does not lift up. So there's nothing. There's no spare tire or anything in there. But you could get two like carry-on bags in here comfortably. Or maybe one large bag and one small bag in here. We've done it before. It was a little tricky, but we've done it. Um, so, eh, it's like a 6 out of 10 as far as trunk space. You could probably fit maybe one dead body in there. Was she contemplating her life over there or something? What's that all about? She don't like recording my videos. There it is. It has the white stitching. Silver stitching, I'm sorry. It's got silver stitching in the seats. That's a nice touch right there. Um, but I'll tell you, the highlight of this car is driving the car. The sound is all right. Y'all want to hear me rev this thing up? Let's rev it. Let me let you hear it. Sounds good? Yes. What do you guys think? All right, but the highlight of the show is really how this car drives. Now, let's look at the key. I like the little red highlight there, but this is a straight BMW key. 
one of the things that's gonna help out with this the look the shoe shape of the car is I'm gonna put a lip in the front it's gonna have a nice little um, graphic on it like a little red laser pinstripe on it as well as on the side and the rear but the main thing that's gonna kill the shoe shape is when we wrap it we're gonna wrap the body color the body color you guys can guess the color but we're gonna leave all of this black so we're gonna take the top of the shoe off I was getting ready to shoot the thumbnail of the car come on we're gonna do a picture I'm just getting ready to shoot the thumbnail I'm like let's take a picture to send to your mom she's like in this car <laughs> she said it's ugly <laughs> To all of the uh, super fanboys, hey, I had to get one, man. This car drives super fun. It does. It's just a little ugly. It looks like a condor or something. Let's, let's keep it real, man. That's bull bus in the front. Look at that angle. That, ugh. Ugh, that angle right there is hideous. However, I know you guys probably will be like, Will's hating on his own car. He's hating on the, the Supra. Well, other angles look good. Like, this angle's decent. You start getting back here, then it starts looking sexy. Then it starts looking exotic. Then it starts looking like something that should have some serious power. Yeah, that looks good right there. All right, we got another shoe car that just pulled up. The shoe shape. Look at it. Look at it. Oh, he got down pipes. I forgot he got the down pipes. <laughs> oh, man. He just put my shoe to shame. <laughs> he just put my shoe to shame, man. <laughs> yeah, that's looking good. You got the down pipes? Yep. So, we're going to see if it meets Tariq's approval. Yes, a little, a little soft sound to it. it. Sounds good on the outside. It's got a little drone on the inside. Yeah. AW did their thing as usual. It sounds good. It sounds damn good. It sounds better than my M4. But it doesn't sound like that over there, though. It doesn't sound like that thing over there. You can do any, you can do some mods. Oh, I got a long list of mods for this car, man. You'll see. So this is like a small version of that car from a. <laughs> yeah, from a uh, shape. Oh yeah, it's spooling. You can hear the turbos. Hit it one time. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, here we are in the 2023 Toyota Supra GR Premium 3.0. And wanted to give you guys an in the car feel for how this car drives. I'm gonna go over my thoughts on what I like about it, what I don't like about it, but how it drives. All right, now. I'm going to start with the obvious. Maybe we can get a... Uh, let's get a launch. Let's, let's just launch it out here. Let's, let me just floor it out here. Oh, 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 oh. It's crab walking. Back and forth. I got the... Um, I got the traction control on. Let's do it again. Ready? quick yeah this car is quick man golly all right so um now i there is a caveat this car when i bought it i bought it used it had 1700 miles on it so i'm thinking cool 1700 miles on it i'm gonna have to do a bunch of mods car is pretty much new but the previous owner was probably somebody like me <laughs> bought the car and immediately started modding it so the car has um, full exhaust cat back from AWE. It has um, intake, it has charge pipes, 
it has a JB4 tuner on it, which is why, <laughs> which is why it takes off like that. Golly, man, this car gets you in trouble if you're not if you're not watching out like cops and stuff. Man, but it sounds good. All right, so let's go ahead and start reviewing. Man, every now and then you guys are just gonna have to forgive me because I'm gonna probably get, put my foot into it. But let's start reviewing the car from all of the different things that you're gonna experience when and if you get a Toyota Supra. This is the kind of car that if you go on Turo, um, you could probably rent one. So if you're thinking about getting one, jump on Turo, see if you can rent one and drive it. And when you drive it, the important thing is put it in sport mode. There's a little button right here that's for sport mode. You press that button, and that that makes it drive like a sports car. If you if you leave that mode off, it's gonna feel a little sluggish. It's gonna be quiet. Might not enjoy the ride as much. So make sure you put it in sport mode. All right, but let's go ahead and talk about the features driving this car, how it feels. Um, first thing I like to, to to talk about. Oh, we got a green light up here. Let's hit it again. Let's hit it. Hold on. We pass this intersection. Get ready. That's addictive. Oh man, all right, so let's talk about it. steering. Steering is good. I give it, I give the steering an eight or I give it an eight out of 10. It's a little bit stiff and I don't know if there's anything you can really do about that as far as the settings. I don't think there's a setting to make the steering a little bit easier, but I like the steering to be nice and easy, uh, but it's a little stiff. So you might like that. You might get a, give it a 10 out of 10. I give it an 8 out of 10. But when you're going slow, it's easy enough to steer. Um, when you're going fast, it's stiff enough to keep control of the car. Steering, I give it an 8 out of 10. Um, comfort. These seats, man, these seats are really, really comfortable. I give these seats a 9 out of 10. What do you think? Seats are comfortable, right? Yes. Very comfortable. Right. I give the seats a 9 out of 10. I don't... Really, I should probably give them a 10 out of 10. I can't think of anything that would make them any more comfortable. Let's give them a 10 out of 10. The seats, the comfort of the car, the suspension is also, I would give, it feels really good. Um, I will give the suspension, oh snap, I gotta turn around. I see some houses for sale. So this might turn into a house vlog. Let me see if I can turn around up here. Um, the suspension feels good. It's not. It's not as bumpy as like a, um, let me see if I can turn around right here. Yeah, I'll go up here and turn around. <laughs> suspension is like a, very, very good. I'll give the suspension a, gotta be careful right here. I'll give the suspension so far a nine out of 10. It could be a little more compliant. Um, it still has stock suspension on it, so it's not very harsh, which is good. I like it. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna give the suspension a nine out of 10. So this guy, this car is getting really high marks. All right, so we're turning left right here. Watch out for this, this car coming. Um, but it feels really good. I don't have any complaints about it, like beating me up. I have some Audis that, So we're turning into a neighborhood right here. The way that I afford, afford it's called Jefferson Manor. The way that I afford these cars that I play with is I invest in real estate. And we're on my side of town and I just noticed a new neighborhood called Jefferson Manor and it looks interesting. So we're gonna have to stop by and see this house up here. But we're gonna ride through the neighborhood. I'm gonna pick up the, the little brochure to see how much these houses cost because maybe we'll grab a house in here and flip it. That'll help us buy another car. All right, so we were talking about suspension. I get a suspension like a nine out of 10. Um, very comfortable car. We drove this car from, from uh, Delaware on the East Coast to Columbus, Ohio, seven hours. 
man, it was comfortable, right? Yes. Very comfortable. So, very high marks on the suspension. Very high marks on the how comfortable the seats are. I say they're excellent. Um, all right, so we talked about steering, suspension, comfort. Um, let's talk about the brakes and the acceleration. Obviously, the shining star of this car, shout out to BMW, is the S58 engine. It's turbocharged. It's a 3.0 liter engine. It's a six-cylinder inline six, and it has 379 horsepower, and the torque is like, I think, 352 from the factory. But if you tune this car, and this car actually does have a JB4 tune on it, then the torque shoots up dramatically. I mean, you could get almost an extra 100 foot pounds of torque and an extra 50 to 70 horsepower, depending on your gas and all that kind of stuff. So the acceleration in this car, even without, even without the tune, even without the tune, the acceleration is pretty darn good. Uh, we rented one of these cars in Miami, Florida area and had a blast driving it. Um, it was not tuned, had a stock exhaust, it sounded phenomenal. Now one thing that they do that you'll notice on the acceleration is they, um, they pump in sound. So a lot of people are not a fan of that, but with this car it's very well done, it's not overbearing, it sounds good. It's almost like driving a video game, and it makes driving a car fun. I hate to say it for a lot of people that don't like the pumped-in sound, but I think they did it. I like it. I like it a lot because you don't have to have a car that's going to be bothering everybody else on the outside for you to enjoy it on the inside. And, like I said, it's not overbearing. If you put it in regular drive mode and take it out of sport mode, you can barely hear the, the sound. You put it in sport mode, and you start playing with the car and it's like you're playing a video game. Love driving this car, which is actually a big part of the reason why I bought one of these cars is because for me, the looks are not the star of the show. Like this car looks like a shoe. <laughs> this, they could have did a way better job with the styling of this car, but the mod potential and the way it drives, um, I had to get one. So acceleration, I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. It could be a little bit more. When you tune it, when you tune it, it's gonna be a 10 out of 10. But damn, it's a lot of cars in this place. I don't know how they fit all those cars there. Yeah, when you tune it, it's gonna be a 10 out of 10, the acceleration, but from stock, I'll, I'll give it a nine out of 10. Now, when you look at the performance numbers, I believe this is a 12 second car in the quarter mile, which is not all that fabulous. But the way it feels when you drive it, it feels like you're going, like you're in a 10 second car. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how to, uh, that was a really nice blue RS or S3, really nice one. Anyway, I don't know how to explain it, to explain it, but it feels like you're in a 10 second car when you're driving it, even though it's more like a 12 second car. Don't know how to explain it. But that just speaks to the acceleration, it feels good. Uh, all right, so. Now that you know a little bit more about the acceleration, let's talk about the braking. Things I care about with the braking is do the, do the brakes squeak and squeal? Um, are the brakes linear Do they or are they grabby? Um, how do the brakes feel? Are they strong? And I have to say, I get the brakes an eight out of 10. They could, be, they could be a little stronger, but they're adequate, they're not, they don't make too much noise. Um, they're just, they just could be a little bit stronger. They are linear though. And that's my biggest pet peeve about brakes is when they're non-linear. You're pressing the brakes like nice and easy. And then all of a sudden they grab. I don't like that. This car does not do that. It actually has really good brakes, really smooth, really linear. And I have to give them an eight out of 10. All right. So we talk about acceleration, braking, steering, suspension now let's talk about the other characteristics of the drive worst thing about this car in my opinion maybe you have something you can add to this 
the worst thing about this car when you're driving it is the sound from the rear end like in this rear compartment area the trunk area there's a lot of rattles and squeaks and bangs like the sound like the glass of the window is clacking clattering up against something you hear the exhaust is kind of loud because it's aftermarket so that could be a good or a bad but you hear like stuff like rattling sometimes and you can hear a little buzzing and stuff of vibrations of stuff in the back and there's no firewall between the cabin compartment and the trunk it's just wide open to the back so you hear everything that's going on in the back of the car which has been a lot of rattles and clattering and stuff which is the worst thing about driving this car the other thing a lot of people talk about is the visibility now i'm used to driving sports cars and two-seaters and um exotic cars and stuff so for me the visibility is fine actually there's a little bit of a blind spot on the passenger side but on the driver's side i can see my blind spot fine out the rear window it's fine as well from the front a lot of people were complaining about not being able to see like the stoplight when you pull up to the stoplight i can see it just fine if you want to complain about that get inside a lamborghini huracan it might just be that you need to adjust your seat to sit a little bit lower so you can see the stop stoplight. I have no problem with the visibility. And for me, I give it, for a sports car, I give it an eight out of 10. It's fine, visibility is fine, if you ask me. All right, pause. All right, so here's, here's another thing I'm gonna complain about that feels lazy on the part of Toyota. And that is, um, that is, when you get in this car for the first time, I'm, I have a BMW M4. I've had older BMWs in the past. I've had older BMs. <laughs> I've had older BMWs in the past. And when you get into this, this car, it feels like a, like a, I'm not gonna say a 90s BMW, but it feels like, like a 2016 BMW from the interior and I feel like Toyota got lazy in the participating in the build and they took too many parts off the BMW Z4 so if you look at this area here that's all BMW right here this screen right here that's all BMW this shifter right here BMW this control right here this whole thing right here is BMW so it feels like they got a little bit lazy and maybe a little bit cheap they put this car together and then let me show you something if you look here in the dash there's a glaring blank spot right there on the right where there should be some nice readout of the status of the car but from what I so so far I haven't been able to put anything in that blank spot and it's irking me badly steering wheel this big giant middle part of the steering wheel is kind of ugly kind of reminds me of the big nose on this car um but yeah it feels like a bmw when you're inside now when you when you drive it it's a good thing you can scare your passengers <laughs> but yeah it feels too much like they they ripped off like you're you're driving a bmw pretty much is what it, how it feels Man, I want some wings, man. We might have to stop and do a food vlog as a part of this. You want some wings? thing that subtracts from this car is that front end is, is pretty hideous to me that's the biggest thing that subtracts from this car if it wasn't for that this car would be like a 9 out of 10 but because of that front end 
I have to give it a 7.9. Maybe an 8. We'll give it an 8. It's an 8. It's a solid 8 because if it wasn't an 8, I wouldn't have bought one of these cars. But that front end, man, it's pretty ugly. But the way that it drives kind of makes up for it. It's your boy Will Motivation back again with another video. And today we're checking out a potential investment property in a new neighborhood called Jefferson Manor Pulte Homes. Let's check it out. So entering the house, dining room, very nice. I like the stamped out ceiling. I like the speakers in the ceiling, that's pretty cool. I like this design. I like that right there. So I guess. In the actual house, this would be, I guess this would be the pass through to the garage. You see right here, it's got like a little study. I like that. Uh -uh. Really cool, right? It's like an office study. All right, you have half bath, your visitors. They have that miedosa. No, porque si... Open concept. I like this a lot. It's nice, right? Yay. Your kitchen. You got your island. Your breakfast. I like the furniture too. Get the morning room. This is nice. Morning room. I like this a lot. Wow, look at this. That costs some money. Ooh. That costs some money. That costs some money right there. That's probably a good 60 grand at least. But I like that, the wine stuff on the wall. The house that I moved out of last was like some something like this. Very much like this. This is actually a lot like this. It didn't have the little morning area, but it had everything else, the kitchen right there. I like this a lot though, very much. All right, let's go. Let's go past it. Lower level, very nice. Ooh, little office nook. Overseeing the hangout. I like that. I could work with something like this. It's a nice little TV area. I like how they got it pointed with the little corner sofa. Looks good like it there's probably a lower level basement down here that we don't have to go see but you got a big basement down there yeah nice this is what's called a five level split so we just saw two levels third level is master bedroom. I had a house just like this. Yeah. Master. Huge. Look at the tray soon. Nice. Bathroom. So mine was like, mine was like this whole thing with the bedroom and the bathroom was like a whole nother thing. Walk-in closet. Nice size. Very, very nice size. Got the water closet. It's nice. Is it the linen closet? Yes. Towels. Bed stuff. There should be three bedrooms up here in the laundry room. So here's the laundry room. I like it. <clears throat> so every five level split is a little bit different. So this is obviously a little different from what I had. But let's check this out. Nice big, nice big bedroom. Nice big bedroom. 
I like it. Walk in closet. Nice size bedroom. Jack and Jill bathroom. So this is a shared bathroom between two bedrooms. It's called a Jack and Jill. <laughs> and this is the cabinetry. Very nice, very nice. Another bedroom. Got a nice little walk-in closet. What do you think about that bed? It's pretty cool. Another one. Your, you got this. This one has its own uh, bathroom, which is really nice. Check it out. Grandma can stay here. <laughs> Nice. I like it. What's the view? The view of the street down there. Okay. Nice. Very nice. Let's see his customs. Okay, so this is five level split. So this is the top floor. So this is, let's say this is one, master bedroom, two, main level, three. Then the lower level is four, and then the basement is five. So that's why they call it a five level split. Very nice. I think this could be a good investment considering the location. Um, have to see what the appetite is in the market, but if the interest rates start getting lower, then these are gonna sell like hotcakes, but they've already been selling them. But me as an investor, what I would do is I would buy it, put the most square footage as I can in it, put the most basic um, settings or finishings, and then I come in and do the finishings myself. To the, really wouldn't have to do a basement in here because you have the lower level and then just try to make a quick 50 grand on or something like that. Gotta see how long it takes them to build. Let's find out. All right, so had a little pit stop right there. <laughs> Check out some real estate. Listen, as a real estate investor, you wanna have these toys and these cars like this, you gotta always be on the lookout for opportunities. And for me, this is my side of town. This is my neighborhood. And I'm very familiar with the real estate out here. So, new builds are, are my preferred investments. So, anytime I see a new build, new neighborhood, I gotta check it out. So, sorry for that pause, but a little bit of knowledge there for you. It's the one and only Floyd Money Mayweather. I'm here to tell you guys to go to Wheel Motivation. The exotic cars is crazy. I've been watching this show for a little while now and it's growing. But we need everybody else to subscribe to Will Motivation and support Will. I'm supporting them, you do the same.